can Brittany Dawn actually pay uh, people back if the state of Texas wins a judgment against her? The state of Texas is seeking, it uh, looks like around $1.5 million uh, from a recent hearing. That's what they think that has gone through her PayPal account uh, from the website that she was using to sell fitness courses. If you don't know who Brittany Dawn is, she's a influencer who um, is currently being uh, sued by the state of Texas uh, under its consumer statutes. They're alleging that she sold a bunch of uh, uh, sort of fitness training plans and nutrition plans to people that were supposed to be customized to them, that were individualized to their weight, their their body size, their goals, and all kinds of things. And that she actually just gave them a bunch of generic stuff that wasn't uh, wasn't tailored to anybody and was sending these sort of generic tasks like "you go girl" type thing type messages that had nothing to do with the person that she was selling the product to. And there are people who say they're out uh, a lot of money on these uh, up to you know numbers that could be more than a thousand dollars sometimes. Um, one question I got on TikTok is this one that I want to answer for people because there are people out there who are in this situation wondering, will I ever get any of my money back if the state of Texas wins and uh, wins their lawsuit against Brittany Dawn? So this I thought was a very good question that I was asked by a woman who says that she paid $1,000 uh, for one of Brittany Dawn's courses. And you can see that she asked on TikTok, can they place a lien on the home uh, to bought, bought with the money she never repaid to a lot of us? Um, so... Uh, Brittany Dawn, at least according to the complaint, and I'm going to get into not going to get into details of um, like where she lives or whatever, but it looks like she does, uh, at least according to what the Texas Attorney General filed, appears to have a house that would be worth around five hundred thousand dollars in Texas. And so the question becomes: Let's say the Texas Attorney General wins, um, is that house going to get seized or have a lien put on it? If you don't know what a lien is, a lien is basically just a, a legal document that says if this house ever gets sold, then the money goes first to me, and if the state of Texas filed one, then that would mean it comes first to the state of Texas, which then uh, would, if if they win this lawsuit, you know, the ordinary, uh, what happens if, if they win one of those is either co comes in as a fine or it gets paid out to people who uh, have been damaged as part of uh, what they call restitution. Um, so could that actually happen here? Well, one of the problems that uh, the state of Texas will, I think will have on this, and, and I did some research on this trying to figure out, you know, is this even theoretically possible given Texas's laws? Texas actually has a very strong, uh, what's called homestead exception. And I used to live in Texas, used to have a house in Texas. Um, you absolutely, if you're living in Texas, want to use this. Um, what you have to do is declare your house to be a homestead. That's something that she probably would have had to have done before um, all this sort of mess started because there can be ways to um, arguably you know, pull that back if she does it as sort of a effort to evade creditors knowing that there's going to be a lawsuit happening. But most people in Texas, your realtor's probably going to advise you, and, and it's kind of insane not to do this because of the tax benefits you get, is to go file this paperwork or that declares your house as a homestead. Well, what is a homestead? It's kind of this... Um, in the old West days, you you would take property and declare, this is the land I'm living on. And Texas has real kind of funny laws on it. Uh, actually, I actually have some friends who have land where they have bought um, cows and, and farm animals because if you have a certain number of cows or goats or whatever, you get uh, basically very extreme d reductions in your property tax from the, the state of Texas. Uh, there's people who get land adjacent to their house so that they can uh, just put enough animals on it to count it as agricultural homestead, and then you're getting a lot of tax deductions. But one of the other effects of a homestead exemption in Texas is that the bankruptcy law in Texas is very, very, very probably, um, you know, the only other state that's arguably better or at least on par with it is Florida. In Texas, and similar to Florida, they exempt essentially an unlimited amount of your house. So your house could be $50 million, $100 million, $200 million. If you go bankrupt, your creditors can't get that money out of the house unless there's very specific uh, scenarios. And I'm going to show you the Texas Property Code and what it says about this. Okay, this is the Texas Property Code, and you can see uh, I've highlighted the key part of this, and it says that interest in land exempt from seizure. That means there are certain types of interest in land that can be exempt from seizure in a bankruptcy or by your creditors generally. Uh, and it, the first part of this says a homestead and or what, sorry, a homestead and one or more lots used for a place of burial of the dead are exempt from seizure for, for the claims of creditors, except for encumbrances properly fixed on homestead property. So let's break that down. Uh, a homestead is this sort of you've declared your area, your property to be the house or the, the, the location that you're living at. And it, so it could be either that or it could be one or more lots used for a place of the burial of the dead. So if you own a cemetery plot and have buried someone in it, you can't go, your creditors can't take your grandma's burial plot, <laughs> which, you know, makes a lot of sense. But the, the separate part of that is the homestead, which is that um, the creditors cannot take the homestead except if 
uh, there has been an encumbrance, an encumbrance properly fixed on the homestead property. An encumbrance is basically just like a, it could be a lien, it could be a debt. It's just the, something that encumbers the property is something that um, sort of hangs over it as a cloud, essentially. Like if you if you try to sell the property, there's going to be this cloud here, this lien that says the creditor gets it if this happens. Your rights to the property are restricted if there's a sale. There's there's going to be money taken out for whoever the creditor is. And these encumbrances that it lists, lists could be just examples or like taxes is number two. So if the state government puts taxes on the property, then you're, they can still get it out of your homestead money. Even if your house is 50 million or whatever, uh, it, it does go to the state government for taxes. There's actually case law. It's not in this case law. It's like a court decision uh, that says that uh, federal law preempts this, which means that if there's a federal law that's more specific, that it can overwhelm this as well, which means um, like that's been applied in the case of IRS taxes. So if the IRS comes at you, Texas law is not going to save you. Um, that doesn't really apply here to what the Texas government is doing, trying to, to to uh, sue Brittany under the consumer protection laws. But so um, short answer of the, at the end of this is I'm not seeing any way I, I could be missing something, but I've looked at this. I looked, I searched for legal cases. I did not find anything. It does not look like the state government could actually get her house um, if she has filed this form to homestead it. Um, so that means that is off limits, but uh, there, that does not mean that everything is off limits. So what are some examples of things that might not be off limits? Well, one is jewelry. Uh, if you have looked at her social media accounts, you can see that she's flashing a lot of jewelry. Um, that's going to be very hard to keep most of that in bankruptcy. There are uh, limits to the dollar value of the amount of jewelry that you can keep in a bankruptcy. And bankruptcy is sort of the what's probably likely if the Texas government goes after, after her. It seems like she's not, I suspect she's not earning the amount that they are uh, trying to take from her. Um, so if the Texas government succeeds and gets the full amount that they are seeking, then uh, in a bankruptcy, the uh, their jewelry ex exemption, an exemption is, is the amount that you sort of keep even, and, and your creditors can't go get to it. Um, it in federal, it's around $1,800, and that applies to like engagement rings, to earring, like you can only get one, that total amount. You can, there's another exemption, you can sort of put it in, uh, uh, if you really, really love your jewelry, you can, you get sort of general exemptions of, I think it's like $14,000 and you can, uh, put individual items at your choosing, choosing in their personal property, um, up to $700 per item. But that does mean if like, if, if, you know, who knows how much the jewelry she's showing around is worth, but if it is worth a lot of money, um, she's probably not going to be able to keep it. Um, and there are, you know, cars and things like that. There are some exemptions. There are some, uh, what the bankruptcy, bankruptcy quote tries to do is give you, like, you can't just take someone's entire life. They, they get to keep basic things for living. They get to keep cars up to a certain amount of value. They get to keep uh, certain amounts of personal property, but there are limits. And so you, the creditors and the state of Texas will be going through trying to get stuff from her. Um, another interesting thing that can happen is um, intellectual property. Uh, I don't know if the state of Texas is looking at this, but in sort, terms of sort of um, forcing a payment from someone in this situation, she seems to be making or has been at least making all her money from uh, being an influencer. And whether that is just a vanity thing right now or whether it is um, something that uh, is you know, being used to make money. We don't know if people are still paying for consul con consulting or other type of stuff. Um, I don't know. Uh, but if she is still making money from that, one, you could take all that money. And two, there are certain types of uh, uh, um, intellectual property, which is just property that's not physical. It's sort of an example would be a patent, uh, a copyright, a trademark. Um, her brand name may be <laughs> something that they could take. If she's trademarked it, they could take uh, someone's YouTube channel. I've actually looked at this in another video about a YouTuber named Jarvis who is suing a, a, a YouTuber named Austin McBroom. And I think that there's a very good chance that you could force someone to give up their YouTube channel, given the terms of service and given how it works, um, if you were trying to collect on them. So those are sort of where you put the screws to someone uh, if you're trying to find the money they have. Because a lot of times people think they can go hide money in bankruptcy. They move it around. Um, it, one of the things that the Texas government is complaining about is that it looks like, or they're saying anyway, that uh, Brittany Dawn hasn't been giving them kind of full PayPal records and that they can prove from the evidence that she did give them that, that she hasn't fully disclosed all the payments that were being made uh, to, from, to, uh, for these, court, these uh, nutrition plans to her by various people. Um, so if there's money being hidden around, not only can they go run around and track it, but they can go take things that... Uh, she may really want her. They may be looking at her Instagram account. They may be looking at her TikTok, and the terms of service for those I haven't looked at. But um, when you're an influencer, there's a lot of risk that uh, if 
you're doing something like this with the state of Texas going at you that they could find something, even if it isn't a full recovery for everybody, um, that it could be, you know, it could, could motivate her to, to find ways to pay it off. And if you like this video, if you like content like this, uh, I've done other, another video on Brittany uh, Dawn's case. I'm going to be trying to uh, regularly cover it as, it as it goes because a lot of people seem interested in this and several other uh, celebrity lawsuits. And I'm going to keep doing those kind of videos and, and ask, answering just general legal questions that people have um, about these kind of cases and about uh, sort of basic concepts about the law. So hit that subscribe button if you want to hear more of this stuff and, and more lawyer explanation of all the details of how all this stuff works and what's, what's going on.